I'd like to welcome you to the Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023 meeting of the Palm Springs Planning Commission. Can I have a roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Alain. Mm -hmm. Here. Commissioner Hirschbein. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Maruzzi. Here. Vice Chair Roberts. Present. And Chair Wehrmuth. Present. All members present, we have a quorum. Uh, may I have a report on the posting of the agenda, please? Yes, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Our agenda was available for public access at City Hall uh, by 9 p.m. on Thursday, March 16th, and posted uh, on the city's website as required by our policies and procedures. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item is the acceptance of the agenda. And I, on item 1A, which is the consent calendar, I'd like to propose that we, um, because staff and members of the commission found some administrative corrections to the um, minutes that were going to be before us, be before us, that we ask that they bring them back uh, to a future meeting. Is there somebody who would like to second that motion? Second. All in favor, just raise your hand or say aye. Aye. Um, uh, can I then have a motion to accept the amended agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the next item is public comment. This time has been set aside for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on consent calendar and other agenda items and items within our general uh, interest and subject matter jurisdiction. Please note that we're prohibited from taking action on an item that is not uh, has not been posted. Uh, testimony for public hearings may be offered at this time or at the time of the hearing. Members of the public who would like to comment on item 4A are directed to comment under this portion of the agenda. Uh, is there public comment? And if the applicant for 4A is here and would like to comment, this would be the time to do it. They're seeing no members of the public that have, uh, that have offered to comment or would like to comment. The public uh, comment section is closed. We are moving to item new business 4A. McGee Sharon Architects on behalf of Desert Productions LLC for a major development permit application to construct a 10,959 square foot warehouse facility on a 21,923 square foot undeveloped parcel located at 200 Oasis Street. May I have a staff report, please? And Madam Chair, as uh, our planner, uh, associate planner, Sarah Yoon brings that up, I did want to introduce her all to you officially, as this is her first presentation before the City Planning Commission. So Sarah joined us back in October from the city of Aspen, Colorado, where she was uh, on the historic preservation team there. And she's joined us as our historic preservation officer, um, but also an associate planner, as I mentioned. So while she'll primarily be engaging with the HSPB on items related to preservation uh, and historic resources, she will also be processing other planning applications, including the one she will present to you tonight. Um, but she's very quickly acclimated to the team, and we're very pleased that she's here and looking forward to her working with you all. So welcome, Sarah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the welcome. And I will go ahead and share my screen so we can get this uh, item started. Are you able to see my screen in full view? Uh, no, we aren't. Okay. Let's... I think you just have to swap the view. How's that? Yes, thank you. Did it take? Okay, great. Um, nothing like starting off with a little bit of a technical difficulty. <laughs> uh, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the commission. For the record, Sarah Yu, Associate Planner for the City of Palm Springs. Uh, today, I've brought before you a project, um, a proposal for developing on a vacant lot, a new warehouse facility, 
the applicant will be working with the engineering department to combine the two parcels. Uh, the property is located in the M1 zone district. Uh, it is in the mixed use for the general plan and the college park specific plan. As you can see in these images, the vacant lot is an internalized lot with no existing curb, gutter, or sidewalks that have been established. The images on the top is the image on the top right hand side is taken from Oasis Road, and the image on the bottom is taken from the alleyway. As you all saw in your staff report, the lot is a lot of record that meets the dimensional requirements as outlined in this chart. The footprint of the proposed warehouse does meet the front yard uh, setback requirements of 25 feet and the maximum lot coverage um, according to the general plan is 50%. Uh, the proposed application does meet this maximum lot coverage. Uh, the building at its tallest point is measured from the parapet, which is 30 feet, which is in compliance with the maximum building height for the zone district. Uh, the height of the wall that is being proposed in the front yard setback will be modified to meet the zoning code standards. And this is stated as a planning condition of approval that is in your packet under exhibit A. Um, and I'd like to just quickly go over the design of the warehouse, looking a little bit closely at the proposed design. The site plan shows that the placement of the 10,959 square foot building um, situated on the lot with the parking uh, configuration as seen in the site plan. According to the municipal code, uh, the required provision for parking is 14 spaces, and that is what is being provided. Um, we have 13 spaces with one um, space that is the accessible space equaling the 14. In accordance with the zoning code, uh, the 30% um, of shading for the parking is required, which is the, being provided with this design. Uh, and if, when you look at the image on the screen, we see that there are two access points, vehicular access points to the site, one uh, from the alley and one from Oasis Road, and both are uh, controlled with uh, rolling gates. The proposed floor area is within the allowable square footage as calculated for this type of this size lot. Uh, the location, um, as you see on this floor plan, uh, it, the trash enclosure location has been um, outlined in red. Um, you see that towards the alleyway. Uh, and the applicant, um, as a condition, will need to follow through with the Palm Springs Disposal Service to confirm the proposed location and also set up an agreement related to regular pickup. That does seem to be a standard um, that is typical. Uh, the proposed location of the mechanical equipment is shown in orange. It is along the south elevation uh, and it is proposed with screening. Uh, the roof plan here seen on the screen, we have a flat roof, uh, metal roof paneling, uh, bad insulation, and it does slope down towards the south for draining purposes and no mechanical equipment has has been proposed with this uh, design. The south and north elevations are shown here. The south elevation is the one that's visible from the street. Uh, the one-story massing is articulated on this facade. There's head-in parking also provided along this elevation. Uh, the fenestration proposed on this uh, facade is, is towards the upper end of the uh, massing uh, with metal awnings above. Uh, the walls, as you see here, will be modified. It is indicated as six feet, but this will be modified to meet the zoning uh, standards. The north elevation visible here is the elevation you get from the alley. And as you can see, uh, the gutters are being proposed on the alley side with the downspouts, um, and it will be only on this location, uh, on this elevation. And then we have the west and east elevations shown here. These will be the internalized views um, limited from the street. You won't be seeing much of this, particularly um, the east elevation. Uh, and you can see the gutters and downspouts uh, on this section um, a little bit better. So you can see how that will be draining off of that roof. Uh, and then here are the supplied renderings that were in your packet. It does uh, do a great job showing the mass and scale of the structure along with the material palette that's been selected for the warehouse. 
Um, again, there's that level of articulation on that front elevation. You can see the metal awnings um, that are seen throughout uh, the design um, and the proposed fenestration. The warehouse building is located among other industrial use buildings and the overall massing is consistent with its surroundings. Uh, the applicant did supply a preliminary landscape plan. I believe that was sent to the board yesterday via email. Um, as part of this application, while a more detailed review of the landscape plan uh, will be conducted with ARC, the preliminary plans and planting schedule that was provided does reveal uh, that the planting selection is a drought resistant um, plant selection and the proposed shading will be adequate on the property. With that, I would like to conclude by saying that the proposed application is consistent with the general plan and zoning standards um, for the district with the conditioned approval. Uh, the findings related to the development permit pursuant to section 94.0401D are met and that was outlined in the staff report uh, in a chart. Uh, you can find that in your packet and read through the details there, which I'm sure you've already done. And as a result, staff does recommend that the Planning Commission approve the application uh, for major development subject to the conditions listed in Exhibit A. Uh, we do have the applicant, applicant um, representative and I believe the owner on uh, Zoom today. Uh, they're also available to answer any questions. And if you have any questions related to the staff report, I'm happy to take those at this time. Uh, can you clear the screen, please? Yes. Questions to staff? Commissioner Roberts. Uh, thank you. And um, Sarah, I wanted to say thank you for an excellent presentation. Um, and welcome. Thank you. Um, do we know what the applicant intends to use this warehouse for? Uh, the application was uh, describing the storage of materials and equipment. Um, and I believe the applicant is online if they'd like to elaborate a little bit on that question. Okay, when we bring the applicant on, I'd like to know. Why don't, why don't we go through questions first before we bring the applicant on? Yeah. Sounds good. Um, are there other questions? Commissioner Lyon. Uh, thank you. I want to make sure I understand, Sarah, uh, understand correctly what's going on with the wall. Mm -hmm. The table in the staff report says that the front wall is required to be four and a half feet and there's uh, six feet that's provided and there's a footnote about conditional approval. And you said something about it. So what's shown in all the drawings um, and in the renderings is a six foot wall. And you're saying that's gonna be lowered and I presume just chopping off the top foot and a half is what's gonna happen. So the uh, applicant um, will be applying for um, minor modification. Um, the four and a half feet is what's required per zoning, underlying zoning, but the applicant does have the ability to apply for a minor um, modification for the walls. And so uh, pending on the approval, uh, if they receive their approval tonight, they will be proceeding with a minor modification to adjust the height of that wall. Uh, the condition is listed uh, in exhibit A. It's, I believe it's the planning comment um, number 10. And uh, let's see if I can read that for the record. The height of wall, walls will be walls within the front property line will be modified to conform with the zoning code standards prior to ARC review. Okay. Um, so Commissioner Land, maybe if I could just elaborate just briefly. Uh, so the AMM that would be granted at the staff level administratively allows them to exceed the four and a half limit by 20%. So you know, I think when you look at the surrounding uses, there are certainly walls of a greater height than four and a half feet on this street already in the surrounding development. So staff are not, uh, staff are supportive of an AMM to get them, they can't get quite to six, but I think they can get to 5.4 feet. Okay, great. That's that's kind of what I was wondering is if it is going to be the staff with the decision with the direction with staff uh, leaning and this is one of the few times in my life when I kind of like a taller wall aesthetically, but okay, thank you. 
Uh, I have just two questions for Sarah or the for Sarah, I believe. Yes. One is: Is there any? Uh, are we? Is there any requirement for uh, an electric charger charging station here? I'm I'm aware that trucks, many trucks in the future will be electric. Um, I believe there isn't a specific requirement as of now, um, but the plans do show uh, the ability to provide for electric. And I, I will defer um, to the applicant team. They will be able to answer that question in a more detailed fashion. Thank you. And then um, the other question I have is usually we would see with something like this, a provision for bike storage in case staff uh, want to bike out there. Do you, is that in this plan? Uh, it is. It's actually um, represented in the site plan. It's near the trash enclosures. Um, so there is some bike parking um, provided on the site. Um, and again, I can... Um, and is uh, that in a condition? Or because on the site plan, it's a requirement. Which way do we think about it? Uh, it's not... A, it, it's not a condition and it's something that the applicant is providing an access. Um, and I can have the applicant speak to that specifically and the provisions related to that. Thank you. Chair, it's on, it's on the plan, it's on the site plan. Right, well, that, the, the question, the real question I had, it might be a question uh, for our director. If it's on the site plan, it's required if it's approved, correct? If you approve the site plan showing the bike plan, then they would, they would need to follow the site plan, yes. But I think what Sarah is also saying is it's it's not necessarily a requirement. They've included it here voluntarily. Um, but since it's on the site plan, you would be approving tonight. We would look to that. Okay. Are there uh, are there other questions of staff? Uh, we've had a request for the applicant. Uh, since this isn't a public hearing, uh, there the applicant is available. Oh, Commissioner Olayan. Staff question. I, I, I apologize. I did have one other question for staff. Uh, the landscape exhibits that we received today show uh, penicetum, fountain grass. I can't find it on the plan views, on the landscape plans, but I do find it on the exhibits. And since it's an uh, invasive plant species in California and in the Coachella Valley, I just want to find out is it actually being proposed to be used or not? Because I don't see it on the site plans. Uh, that is a great question. Um, and I, I think with that preliminary landscape plan, um, because it is under the ARC review, I think we can go ahead and recommend, provide any recommendations for ARC when they are doing their review. And if we have any concerns about plant species, we can certainly include that um, it, as part of their review. Uh, am I that it isn't a a plan a plan that we would approve in any instance? If I'm correct, uh, is that what you're saying, Commissioner Elian? Uh, just so that I understand, I've not heard of this grass. So, I'm sorry, you heard it described what? I, I'm sorry. I'm just curious. I, uh, just to follow up on what the, the, the Madam Chair said, uh, that the grass that you're describing is an invasive species that we yes. would not want to see on a plan here. So I correct. think. Correct. I think we can have the applicant elaborate on what their intention was by showing that on the landscape plan, but we can but also direct that the ARC that, eliminate that through their review. <laughs> yeah, normally, I would just uh, leave it to ARC, but that one caught my eye in particular because of this. I'm the, I'm the applicant. Can I just jump in real no, quick? No, at this point, until I recognize you. Okay, it's, sorry. <laughs> it's still before the commission. Okay. Um, it, it, the other, uh, the other thing I wanted to comment on, and it will probably go to the ARC, is the tree choices. Uh, unfortunately, one of my favorite trees is the Desert Museum Palo Verde, and it has a blight condition all the way across the valley. Um, we had about 30 of them at Asina, and we're losing them very quickly. Uh, and the other tree, the uh, Cal... Uh, not pronounced... Uh, Palaco uh, doesn't hold up well to wind. So that will be something that we've also lost all of those at Asina. So I would just send that along as adv advisories to the ARC. Uh, but at this point, what I wanted to say is that we would, um, 
we would normally have recognized the applicant and let them speak in public hearing. So, uh, and because the applicant didn't come forward in public hearing, what I'd like them to do is answer is answer um, questions from the commission. So you you are recognized, um, and if commissioners have questions or you've heard some of their questions, if you could address them. So am I, am I allowed to speak now? Yes, please identify yourself. Hi, my name is Gisela Colon and I'm an artist. And um, I know one of the early questions was what is the warehouse gonna store? And it's basically gonna store my art. So the main function is just to store my art pieces and um, those are made somewhere else. I have another studio in Duarte. So it's not gonna be really making anything. It's more like just overflow storage for me in the desert. And did you want to address the questions about the plantings? Sure, you know, we chose my, the landscape architect that we hired. We basically chose whatever was listed on the city's, um, it was a site, it was um, overlay plan. I don't remember the exact name of it, but it was something like the College Park. It's the Coachella Valley, um, it's the Coachella Valley plan, yes. Yeah, so we just chose plants from there, but we're entirely flexible. Like all of the concerns you guys have raised, I'm 100%. We'll work with whatever the plants are that are approved or like the best ones. You know, we just chose from that list because they look good, the pictures, but I'm totally open to changing them out as whatever, you know, the, the committee or whatever you guys call yourselves is open to whatever the best plants are for the desert, you know? Thank you. Are there other questions of the applicant? I'm going to take this matter back to the commission. Um, I'm going to start it off with a motion to approve with sending a few comments along to the ARC regarding plantings. Um, the comments would be that um, the fountain grass is an invasive species and we strongly recommend that they not use that plant and a caution regarding the two trees that uh, the, the heritage Palo Verde has a blight, which is killing some of the plants and that the uh, Palaco um, might, uh, might not be appropriate in that it's had a problem holding up to wind, but to look carefully at the two tree selections and make their best decision. Um, and I would add a third, if I may. Yes. And, uh, that is that the uh, Hesperello parviflora is shown underneath all of the tree canopies. And that's a plant that typically requires direct sunlight, broad sunlight, if you want it to blossom. And would the Architectural Review Commission look at that as well? So that is the motion. Is that a second, Commissioner? That's a second. Um, is the matters before the commission? If there are no comments or questions? I move approval as presented. Uh, so that's the motion for approval, Commissioner Elayan, and with the with the, the advisories, JR, regarding the plantings? Uh, yes, certainly. I, I, my concern in that is being too restrictive. I, I think it's fair for us to make us recommendations based on your experience of certain trees, but if they want to take a chance or there are new varieties that we may not know about, I'd like that to be just recommendations rather than restrictions. And I would like that clearly stated to the ARC as well. That because there had been a motion that was made and seconded, I would be delighted if you'd make the motion. I believe the fountain grass has to be a firm recommendation that it not be used. Okay. If, it's that, if, if it is not allowed to be used, that's fine. Can we know that? We do know that it's an invasive species and we're trying to eradicate it. Okay. Um, so that JR has made the motion. Commissioner Elaine has seconded it. Uh, it's before the commission. Can we have a roll call? Sunday. Now, 
Vice Chair Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Elian. Yes. Commissioner Hirschbein. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Maruzzi. Yes. And Chair Wormer. Uh, yes, and I just wanted to say that I thought this was a very nicely designed project. I'm very, very happy to support it. Chair, I'd like to add one thing as well. I, I um, concur with you for an excellent um, application to us. And the building is very attractive. We don't see that very often. And I'd also like to suggest that you consider solar panels if you have not. You have an excellent building and location and siting for that. And it could easily handle all your power needs there within your building. Doing it early um, pre-construction can make it more cost effective as well. Okay, noted. Noted. Thank you. You bet. Good luck. A quick question to the applicant. Are your art pieces very large? Some of them are big. <laughs> I have wow. all sizes. I have That's a very like, large like, warehouse. Like behind me, you have a small one on the wall there. You know, but I, I, I also make some really large sculptures. So this warehouse will give me a chance to, you know, have storage for some of the big ones. Wow. Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be part of the neighborhood. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the matter passes unanimously. Uh, that is the end of the hearings that we have tonight. And uh, we are going into our director's report. Sure. Uh, a few items tonight. So just an update that at our last city planning, or sorry, city council meeting, which I'm looking to my calendar, was on March nine the rios project uh, was approved by the city council as recommended by the planning commission um so uh that's good they did have what i think was a good discussion around affordable housing um and i think expressed for the record and for the benefit of the public council's desire to promote more affordable housing which i know is very much in line with the work you all are doing across the community, um, but certainly understanding that we are constrained by the lack of policy that we have at this time to require affordable housing in projects such as Rios. Um, so it was an encouragement from the city council for us to continue thinking about that, uh, which is a bit of an update I'll give in a minute, um, but that did go through. So we're, we're, and they were very pleased with the work that the subcommittee and that the planning commission did in shaping that project in such an important location in the city um, and extended their thank you to all of you. Um, we have, speaking of that, at our next meeting on April, uh, looking to my calendar again, April 12th in two weeks, we will have a couple of study sessions on the agenda, which uh, we're excited about. One of them is actually an update from a consultant that we engaged with several months ago to start looking at exactly this issue of an inclusionary housing policy or, or other policies around affordable housing commercial linkage fee is another thing that they're looking at um, so they've been studying largely the feasibility of what those types of programs could look like for palm springs so if we were to consider an inclusionary housing program you know, what's the right level? What's the right level of affordability? How many, you know, units could we look at on site versus, you know, payment in lieu uh, or off site provision? And how does that pencil out in our market? Um, and they've been working with a number of, uh, the, you know, with uh, people across the development industry in terms of coming up with formas and other assumptions to make sure that they're, you know, considering the cost of development here in Palm Springs and what that could look like for us. Uh, same with the commercial linkage fee. So that is, money that we could charge to non-residential development really to go into a fund that the city could use to supplement affordable housing creation throughout the city, you know, really to look at providing housing for the workers in those industries and those businesses or industrial uses uh, based on sort of what we know about income levels of those employees. So it's really interesting work. It's exciting. It's timely. It's something we really need to do. And the goal of the study session is, is in one part to give the members of the public sort of an early opportunity to engage in, in the conversation. And then also obviously to get feedback from all of you, um, given your background and interest in this subject. So we're excited for that discussion to happen on April 12th. 
you know, I have to put the caveat out there that this is not something the city council has taken up yet. They're obviously asking for it. So this is sort of very preliminary stages of the conversation, but that will be coming before you all in two weeks. The other study session that will be happening that night, um, we believe is um, for the Art Colony site, which is on Racket Club between Indian and Palm Canyon. So I believe for those who were on the commission at the time, there have been a few different study sessions about this site in the past. Um, and so they are looking to come in with a housing plan um, that they are looking for feedback from the commission on. So that will happen in two weeks. And finally, um, we are hoping to bring before you that same night our annual zone code update. So we'll have a busy night in, in a couple of weeks, um, but that's what's tracking for our next meeting. Uh, did also want to give you an update on our general plan update and specifically our housing elements. So many of you who are on our distribution list may have seen that David Newell distributed uh, the revised draft of the housing element earlier this week. We have an obligation to circulate that or make it available publicly for seven days before we submit it back to HCD for their review. Um, so we are hoping to get that into them next week to start our final clock and hopefully get their certification that it meets their requirements before we bring it back to you all for consideration and then certainly the city council. But we are certainly hoping that within the next sort of two to three months, we will get that approved and be in compliance. Yes, <laughs> yes, crossing our fingers um, so that we can get that behind us. We also have revised draft of the land use element that we're working through internally, just reviewing some of the changes that were made uh, by the consultant and they are working on just some CEQA documentation so we can get that process moving again as well. So ideally we'll have this all wrapped up, hopefully late summer, but uh, stay tuned. And then finally, just, you know, our standing item on in-person meetings. So I know we've talked about this a lot, but I think at this point, the thinking is that we would return in person to the city council chambers for our meeting on April 12th. Um, so we will all convene there. I'm going to certainly work with IT and make sure that we wrinkle, uh, get any wrinkles on the uh, technical side sorted out ahead of time. Um, we will remain hybrid, so we will have members of the public or our applicant community given the option to join remotely if they would like to do so. We're certainly encouraging folks to participate in person where they can. Um, but I know, for example, that the consultant team who are doing the inclusionary housing study have you know uh, various needs that require them to join remotely. So it's good to have that, that option for folks like that that can still participate in our meetings remotely. Um, but it'll be good for us all to be in the same space. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and I know that we've talked sort of extensively um, about some of the findings that the city council is making in, I'm not going to get the state bill right, but the bill that is allowing us essentially, essentially some more flexibility in our remote meetings and participations that is on the books through the end of the year. And so city council on a rolling 30-day basis is re-upping the findings that promote social distancing uh, to allow us to do that. All of that to say that I think for now, we have a little bit of flexibility if, if situations arise where individual commission members need to participate remotely, but I would say we need to ensure that we have a quorum present in the city council chambers. And I'm looking to our attorney, Jim Priest, to correct me if I misspoke, but that's my understanding of the rules as they are today. Um, and should the city council not elect to make those findings again, then we go back to this sort of underlying Brown Act provisions. And so we'll keep you updated. Um, as we know more, but looking forward to seeing you all on April 12th and certainly reach out early, as early as you can, if you are unable to attend in person and we'll see what we can do to accommodate you. Questions? Um, Chris, um, so are we only seeing study sessions on the 12th? We are seeing two study sessions as well as the annual zone code update, which is, uh, I believe it's a hearing. Um, but that, that's a, that's a, a, a business item that will be before you for consideration. Okay, I may have to miss that meeting, so thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's a public hearing notice. For sure, uh, fine. Um, Director, I have a couple questions. One is, uh, and this was talked about, but I, I, the specifics didn't, didn't uh, go, I didn't remember the specifics. Uh, the state, has limited the number of reviews that we can do uh, uh, on housing projects. And if we have a study session on that uh, arts colony project, how many more reviews are we allowed? 
uh, can Mr. Priest, do you have the answer to that in terms of the state requirements of the, the overall number? And then I'll answer something more specific to this project. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Um, yeah, you're allowed five reviews. A study session would be considered one of those reviews. So you would be, you know, using up part of the five in that study session. So we have so to be... The, the planning commission is allowed five or five including the ARC? I know the city is allowed five. It doesn't de it doesn't denominate between ARC, Planning Commission, City Council. So we do have to be judicious about the you know number of reviews that are done across the spectrum in the city. So if we assume that council would have to review it, and then ARC would review it, and we do a study session, we're down to one other. Uh, review session for planning commission, right? Uh, it gets you to five, yeah. So, I mean, Chair, I don't know how you feel about it, but perhaps under those conditions, a study session isn't the way we'd want to go. Uh, that was a question I was going to ask uh, the director as well. We had talked, because there is a limitation that mm -hmm. council gave us to three meetings uh, but some of them could be, I, I think it was three, and that included uh, three meetings. Was it plus two subcommittees? I can't it remember. Was, I think it was three plus two study sessions if the applicant agrees to oh. it. And so what uh, I was question, going to say, oh, I'm sorry. My question was, and this may be exactly what you're going to say, is I would like the applicant to agree that this study session does not count as one of those five meetings. And so what I was going to say was they have specifically requested this study session. I think that before they get too far down the, the planning, they're certainly eager for the input of the planning commission. And so as it relates to the city policy, we can certainly get that clarification from them. I'm going to look to Mr. Priest again. I don't know if you know, and, and I don't know that they would go down this path, but if the applicant has voluntarily requested or agreed to sort of waive a study session as counting towards one of these meetings, does the state law contemplate that at all? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Hadwin. Uh, the state law doesn't really discuss that, but uh, we know of situations in, in other jurisdictions where the applicants requested that and we've agreed that that's not going to count as part of the five. So I think if, if the applicant has specifically requested this, I think that uh, we can do that. And I would like that clear because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to give up the five meetings if for a study session, uh, this will be a, con a controversial, it could be a controversial project. So if, I, I don't know if we vote on this or we just give our opinion, but if the uh, applicant does not agree to waive that as, a, as one of the maximum required reviews, uh, I would say we don't do a study session. We go right to presentation. I, I think that if, if, you know, and not to cut you off, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, um, but if, if that's the wish of the commission, we can certainly circle back with them. And if they need more time or don't agree to that, then I think that we could regroup and, and get further direction uh, or see how they want to handle it. But I think the sentiment is clear. Thank you. I, I have another question of staff. Can I ask it now? Of course. Um, I just wanted to get an update on um, you talking about affordable housing and just kind of rang a bell in there. Um, what's the status of the one on Palm Canyon and Stevens Road, whose name eludes me? Is that the uh, agave or aloe or whichever name it used to have? Yeah, as I understand it, they're still working through their permitting process. So um, I think that they are coordinating with buildings, as I understand it, to work through their permitting process. So, so you would consider it active? It's not something that's I, sort of died I, on the vine? No, as far as I know, it's, it's, it's active and they still have intentions of moving forward with it. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's all I have. Uh, I actually skipped over Planning Commission uh, reports, <laughs> requests, and comments. We've had some of them here, but are there other requests or comments? Commissioner Maruzzi. 
Do you have an update on the uh, Dream Hotel project? Condo slash condo? Oh, yeah. No, that's a good question. Thanks for asking that. So <laughs> it shifted a few times. And the reason is, you know, you all uh, had your series of hearings on that uh, and advanced it to the city council in terms of the changes that they were making to the plans. Um, but in parallel with that, there were also conversations going on with the settlement agreement, the sort of operations agreement around the status of the Dream Hotel. Um, and that conversation has been kind of going back and forth between the city attorney's office and the Dream Team. Um, and that has led us to kind of continue the hearing a few times. At this point, we are anticipating that that would go back before the city council, I want to say at the end of April, just to give the lawyers time to wrap up the agreement. So. The planning side of it has has not really nothing has changed since you all saw it last year. It's just kind of been waiting to go in tandem with the broader agreement, which was city council's request that those be considered together. Uh, they are continuing, however, to work on some of the you know construction uh, planning behind the scenes. They did submit. Uh, Edward just came in and passed me a note now that they did just submit their offsite grading plan today and they continue to work with building and engineering on some of the sort of you know technical aspects of keeping work on site moving uh to the extent that they can without going through city council for the broader changes to the plan so things are kind of happening in parallel but we expect that will come back for a hearing at the end of april what about the um i don't know what it's called anymore the one across between indian and palm canyon this never ending the thompson hotel is that what it's called now okay yeah so as I understand it, they're continuing to move forward as well. So they are working through. Um, Does five people on, on site constitute working? I mean, it's. So I, I've never seen so few people, even building a, a small home, work on a project like that. I believe it's it's ebbed and flowed. I think we've had periods of more activity and then less activity. And, and you know, some of what we're hearing are, you know, supply chain issues and things like that. But I know even just as recently as, as earlier this week, uh, you know, members of the planning team were working with them on, you know, going through some of their final uh, approvals and things like that. So as far as we know, they're still planning to open later this year. We've not heard of any further delays, but I hear you. I think we get this question a lot. Why isn't there a lot of activity on site? What they're telling us is that mm -hmm. they're just waiting for materials and staffing issues, but that they're fully on track. The issue of supply uh, issues makes me laugh because DAP Health is already constructing their building without any problems. And that enormous building on Takowitz that we approved, it's how many stories is that? I mean, they don't seem to be slowed it's, down by supply issues. I, I think right. it's an excuse that a lot of people can use, just like you know, raising prices because it's inflation. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask about two other projects, Serena Park, um, which went back through city council and was supposed, I believe, supposed to have had uh, building permits for their first phase and buildings built by now from the last city council decision. And the other one is where we are with Orchid Tree. <laughs> You guys are asking me all the fun projects tonight. Um, so Serena Park, uh, what I can say about that is we, you know, we did issue them a default notice in the fall because they were not in compliance with the development agreement as well as on-site sort of maintenance and security issues. We have been working with them very regularly to address those issues. They do, they have now completed uh, another round of spraying of the site to avoid sort of blowing sand and things like that. We are working with them to continue to clean up the site, to remove graffiti, et cetera. So that is all ongoing in terms of sort of the on-site experience. As for the development agreement itself, you know, I think that they, their team is working with the city attorney's office on some potential changes to the development agreement. And obviously they've missed some deadlines. So looking at what, what does the process look like going forward? What are more realistic timelines? Um, that will ultimately have to come before you know the city council for a decision and i don't want to speak for them but um that's kind of where it is in process as we know they're behind schedule they need to come up with a more realistic schedule and then we'll go from there so does that say that we should worry about development agreements in the future um i 
I think it's one part the state of, the state of the economy over the last year and another part perhaps just the specifics of this development. And so I think this one has languished for quite some time. Uh, I think that there have been challenges with the site. Um, I think um, you know they were working with a home builder that that decided to go in another direction and so I think they're just trying to regroup and get it back on track. Um, so I think if this is more specific uh, really. Um, so hope to have more update for you on that in the coming months for sure. Um, but I know that's another sensitive one that people ask about regularly and, and all I can really say at this point is we're continuing to work with them on making sure that something happens with that site and that um, you know they, they meet their obligations. For Orchid Trait, Orchid Tree, that's a good update. Thank you. So, you know, uh, obviously they received their extensions uh, last year from both you all and then the city council. They did come back to city council a couple of weeks ago with sort of a preliminary request to make further changes to both the project and the terms of the agreement with the city for the development of that site, uh, primarily around the amount of TOT that they would get from the project. Uh, I think, you know, the city council gave them a bit of a tepid response and any further changes to the agreement. Um, and I think that they are now regrouping in terms of how they want to move forward. I think some of the changes they wanted to make to the planning entitlements to the site plan itself were aimed at reducing the overall cost of construction. So they really want to bring that construction cost down while still maintaining, you know, the, the, the overall sort of luxury hotel uh, aspect of the project. And some of those, I think, you know, from planning's perspective, we're happy to work with them on, um, but nothing has been formally filed. And again, I think because of the direction that city council gave them, they're kind of regrouping and thinking about their strategy, uh, how they want to move forward. And, and the hotel that's being finished on Indian Canyon, um, how, how close is that to completion? Is and this the one by the parking garage? Yes. It's open. So they had, or it's opening. I think I'd heard March 15th, but I think it's now an April 1st opening. I think they've done some previews. They've had some write-ups in the media. Um, and so they are, they are close to opening. Um, there are some elements we're still working with them on just to make sure that they are um, built out in compliance with the plans that were approved for that project, both by you and by the ARC, some design elements. Um, nothing major, so I, we are, we are allowing them to open, but working with them just to sort of resolve some of the outstanding design elements. Um, but is that project there, is actually coming online. Is there a grand opening? Uh, I haven't heard the details of it just yet. Okay. I will pass that along if so. That's that's it's great to see that happening. Yeah, yeah. I will get that uh, confirmation and send it along. Are there other um, reports, requests, comments, or, or questions of the director? Seeing none, I will adjourn this meeting until, uh, before I adjourn, I wanna adjourn it uh, with a thank you to uh, Charlie Irvin, who was a commissioner with us uh, served with us for several years and has moved on to the uh, Palm Springs Unified School Board uh, and had to leave us because he won uh, an election. Uh, just uh, adjourn this with a thank you to Charlie. Uh, we're adjourned until 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, April 12th, 2023.